you want to give your life to Jesus. Oh, yeah, that is you want. Yes, come over. It's your wish. Your pastor is going to pray for you. I will find it out. It's your wish. You want to give your life to Jesus. Oh, yeah, that is you want. It's come to Jesus. We come to make a divine exchange. To give him our mourning and receive from him joy. To give him our ashes and receive from him beauty. That is Jesus. So, my subject today is the resurrection, the place of my healing. So I started talking about how the resurrection was a proof that Jesus was who he said he was, that Jesus was who the prophet said he would be, and Jesus still is who the Bible says he is. Maybe we can open that scripture, Romans chapter 1. We shall read verse 3 and 4. Uh, the resurrection, the place of my healing. Healing, as you know, is a special subject for me. Uh, I am trained to do it and I'm called to do it. You see? Romans chapter 1 verse 3. The gospel regarding his son who as to the flesh or his human nature was descended from David. And then verse 4 says, and as to his divine nature according to the spirit of holiness, was openly designated the Son of God in power, in a striking, triumphant, and miraculous manner by his resurrection from the dead, even as Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen? The resurrection designated Jesus as our Savior. The resurrection designated Jesus as the Son of God. The resurrection designated. You know he had been three years of his ministry. He was always making this statement. The Father sent me. As the, what the Father is doing, that is what I do. What the Father is saying, that is what I say. He was always talking about the Father. He was always talking about, on the day he was baptized, a voice came from heaven and says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. You find that in Matthew chapter 3. But for all the three years, there was contention between him and the Pharisees and the Jews. They didn't believe that he was the son of God. In fact, in John chapter 8, when he mentioned it and he got on their nerves so much, they reached a point and they said, you are a Samaritan and you have a demon. You know, when he mentioned that he was a son. But the resurrection designated him as the son of God. Why? Why, why, why is that significant? Because as the son of God, he was a healer. As the son of God, everything he did, every ministry he did, he did it because he had come from the father. And he spoke in John 5, 19, he kept saying, as what I see my father do is what I do. So all the healings he was doing, all the miracles he was doing, all the setting of people free that he was doing, he was doing it because he was revealing what the father was doing. And the, re the resurrection was a proof that this is him. Whatever he has said about himself, it is true. Now in this service, I want to take us a little bit deeper and talk to us about the resurrection being the demonstration of power. There is, why is the resurrection the place of my healing? Because in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, God demonstrated this power. When we talk about healing, we are not in opposition against medicine. We are not in opposition against medical practice. I am a medical doctor, pediatrician. But we also believe what the Bible says, that uh, what is impossible with men is possible with God. So there is a place where medicine has its place. We do things. Yesterday we had a healing meeting in Mbarara. So many people were healed. But before I came on to preach, my wife is usually like the announcer. <laughs> so when she was announcing and giving the announcement, she said, one of the things we want you to do, you people, 
is to make sure you take the corona uh, vaccine. We have the healing meeting, but we are telling people, take the COVID uh, vaccine. Some of you, maybe this is a word for some of you. Uh, some of you probably think it is 666. Uh, six, six. <laughs> Let me say it's 666, all those kinds of things. But uh, the vaccine is safe. And if you have opportunity and if you've not yet taken it, please take it. I took it because I believe in medicine. I believe in science. But I also know there is where science ends. Where science ends, the resurrection comes as the place of healing. Hallelujah. Yes. Where science ends. The resurrection comes as the place of healing. So I want us to open our Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 to 20. It's a place of healing because it demonstrated the power to heal. It demonstrated the power of God. When we talk about healing, healing does not happen by our strength, does not happen by our power. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And the resurrection of Jesus from the dead was a demonstration of this power. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. It's a prayer. I encourage you to pray that prayer for yourself also. Paul was praying it for the Ephesians. He said, I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the knowledge of him. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance. Healing is our inheritance. Hallelujah. Verse 19. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. That deserves a hallelujah. Ah, uh, the resurrection of God. Paul is praying for the Ephesians and says, I pray for you that you will know that you will understand this power. What this verse tells me, I also shared Philippians 3.10, you can write it and read it later. In 3.10, he was praying that he would know God and the power of his resurrection. I realize that this power is not something that you just know by head knowledge. This is something that you have to understand by revelation. You have to understand this power. You have to pray that God opens the eyes of your heart. God opens the eyes of your heart to see this power. And Paul prayed for them and that I pray for you that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power. And then it says, this power is in us and for us. Hallelujah. And he demonstrated this power when he exerted on Jesus, raised him from the dead, and then lifted him up and seated him at the right hand of the Father. That power that rose Jesus from the dead, that power by which he ascended into heaven, the Bible is telling us that that power is available for us. That power is available for us. That's why the resurrection is the place of your healing. Because the power Sincerely, people, the power that rose Jesus from the dead, that power can heal allergy. Yes. The power that rose Jesus from the dead, it can dissolve a tumor. The power, you know, I've been reading certain verses, I've been reading certain things in the scriptures. There's a way God used to fight for his people in the Old Testament. He would just tell them, I have given you your enemies. And then he would like in some instances, he would get the enemy soldiers to fight each other. And they just fight themselves. And when the children of God come, they find they have fought themselves. And I was saying, Lord, I think I need to start praying certain prayers. If somebody has cancer, I command the cancer cells in the body to start fighting each other. Yes. 
In those days, there were Syrians and Amalekites. In these days, we are dealing with cancer cells and tumor cells. So we need to start commanding them. If the chemo has refused, you say, okay, if chemo hasn't dealt with you, deal with yourself. Kill each other. The power, the power that rose Jesus from the dead, this power is available. And the Bible says it is available for us. The resurrection is the place of your healing because in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, God demonstrated this power. For the whole world to see, this power was made available. This power is there for you. Every time you have a situation that is too much for you, every time you have a condition that is overwhelming you, remember that there is power which is immeasurable. Hey, there's power which is immeasurable. I was telling people the other day that, uh, you know, Meme and Yaka, it is measuring. <laughs> Even if you pay Yaka for 500,000, they are still units. They will say you have 1,000 or 5,000 units. And when you start putting on your gadget, the units start reducing. No matter how much of the power you are paid for. But Paul said, what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power? It is, it is so immeasurable. This power is, <laughs> I was telling people the other day, I didn't have a word to use. So I said, this power is so powerful. I didn't have a word to use. This power is so powerful. It is so immeasurable that God is able to heal all of us here at the same time and you won't have a power reduction. <laughs> yes. He's able to heal everybody here. Everybody calling on him all over the world. God is able to move in their lives at the same time and you will not experience any power reduction. Now to him, Paul said, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or imagine by means of this power that's at work in us. He's able to do exceedingly. That's Ephesians 3.20 that I just read from my heart. Okay? He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you can ever ask or imagine. If you are here and you are sick, if you're here and you've got a report that tells you you have five years to live, if you're here and you've got a report and tell you this thing is a familiar thing, it doesn't go. I have good news for you. The power of God is greater. Our God there's, there's that song, there's that song we sing that our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is mighter. The power of God is greater. God is greater. This power is, it is immeasurable. It is unlimited. It is surpassing. And this power is available for you when you're there at home and you don't know where the rent is going to come from. This power is available for you. It is the power that Deuteronomy talks about in chapter 8 verse 18 when it says he is able to give you power to make wealth. This power can come and give you an idea that will cause you to change the world. This power can give you an idea that will turn your business around. This power, the power of God. <laughs> The power, you can be here and maybe you suffered an accident and the accident, they told you that your bones got a problem, maybe your muscles got a problem, you can't do certain things because of an accident. Let me tell you the truth. The power of God, the power of God can make a difference. The power of God can make a difference. I prayed for a sister yesterday. She had, she had an accident. Her car rolled many times and after that, uh, they did physiotherapy and everything. But this arm could not go beyond this point. It was always up to this point. For one month, the arm was always up to this point. I told her, the power of God is greater. The presence of God is greater. I told her, the Bible says, they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. When I lay my hands on you, I have laid this power on you. So I laid my hand on her. When I laid my hand on her, the arm started doing like this. <laughs> ah, I told you that what you're doing, I saw them doing them when we were rotating through orthopedic. They saw the orthopedic, they would be doing arms like this, trying to make them straight. I had just laid my hand on her. And the power of God, you know, this power of God can be a moving hospital in one person. The power of God, you know, you lay hands on somebody, the power of God does some ENT, 
power of God does some ophthalmology, the power of God does some gastrointestinal you know something, the power of God does some the power, the power, the power. What can I say? It says that it is immeasurable, it is unlimited. Today I want you to believe that the power of God is available for you. Yes. That's the message I have for you in this service. The resurrection was a demonstration of this power. The resurrection, God exerted this power in Jesus, got him out of the grave. This power rolled away the stone. The same power that rolled away the stone can roll away the stone in your situation, can roll away the stone in your family, can roll out. Oh God, the power can make a difference. It can make a difference. It can roll away a stone of addiction. It can roll away a stone in your family. The power can roll away something that has been overwhelming you for years. The power can change your story. The power can change your status. The power can change your health. The power can change, oh God, the power of God. That's what I came to talk about. That's what I came to talk about. This power is available for you. This power changed my life. 1996, I remember I was at the convention site in Chigezi High School. There was a, a convention. They preached the power of God came upon my life. I gave my life to Jesus. At that time, I was in drugs. I was smoking marijuana. I looked humble and quiet, but I was dangerous. You know? Yeah. There's some of you here, you sit here, you're humble, you're quiet, but you're dangerous. You're dangerous. Terrorist material. You know, I was a terrorist material. You know? When you're there having those ideas, I think I need to change my hairstyle. I think I need to put a pin in my ear. I had many ideas, strange ideas. I was terrorist material. But the power of God came and changed my life. And changed my life. Yes, yes. The power of God can change your life. You're here and maybe you're overwhelmed with your life. You're not, you're not happy with how your life is going. Uh, why don't we pray? I think I've finished for this service. I've finished finished. If you're sick, I want to pray for you. I want to release this power on your life. If you're sick, you can put up your hand. I don't have to reach where you are. The power is moving all over the place. The power is moving all over the place. There is a, a radiation. The power is radiating from my life and from the life of all these men of God. The power is there. If you're sick with any condition, just put up your hand. We are going to pray for you. Whatever condition it is, the, today, today I want you to believe that it is the the end. It is the last day of that condition. You will come and testify that on that Sunday, when a crazy man spoke about the power of God, the power of God came into my eye. I pray, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, everybody putting up their hand, let this power that was demonstrated in raising Jesus from the dead, let this power be the place of their healing. In the name of Jesus, I release healing in their bodies. I release healing for blood conditions. I release healing for eyes. I release healing for ears in the mighty name of Jesus. I command ulcers to be gone out of someone's body. In the name of Jesus, the woman who is here and has issues in her reproductive system, I speak healing in the name of Jesus. Every fibroid, I cast it by the roots in the name of Jesus. I speak healing. I speak healing to migraine headaches in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to forgetfulness. Those attacks that people get at night, I cancel them in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cancel every generation curse in the name of Jesus. I declare that Jesus became a curse for us so that we can receive the blessing of God. I release the healing virtue of God, this power of God in people's lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Receive it. Woo. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, one more thing and I finish. You have never given your life to Jesus. This power that changed this uh, drug. I was bad, by the way. Yeah, I was bad. I was bad. I was like a specialist at letter writing. Like for the girls. I was like the one who was consulted to write. <laughs> but the power of God. Now you're there and you have never given your life to Jesus. And you want to give him your heart today. We want to give you an opportunity. Church is the place where we come to meet Jesus. Church is the place where we come to experience this power. When we talk about the place of healing, this healing can be even healing from a life of sin, healing from a life of regret, healing from a life of guilt. You're maybe dealing with guilt and a lot of condemnation and every time you go in your bed you struggle with all kinds of doubt healing from self-doubt healing from you know you wonder whether you go to heaven or everything 
today, the power of God can make a difference. If you're there and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to give you a chance. Put up your hand. We shall pray together. Yes. You want to give your life to Jesus. Anybody like that? Yes, thank you. Any other? Yes, thank you. Any, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm seeing all those hands. Any other person even up there? Stand up if you're putting up your hand. Friends. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Any other person? Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. I want to lead you in a prayer. The Bible says uh, in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 it's actually talking about the resurrection it says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead you shall be saved it's a simple prayer we all start with that prayer I started with that prayer uncle all started with that prayer many of these, these singers everybody you see they started off with that prayer that prayer changed our life. So lift up your right hand. Lift up your right hand. I will, I will lead you in this prayer. And afterwards, the chaplain will come and pray for you. Say, dear Jesus, I give you my heart today. I believe that you died for me. And you rose again. Today I give you my heart. I confess you are Lord. I accept you as my savior. I receive forgiveness for my sin and I receive the gift of eternal life in Jesus name Amen Amen Hallelujah Praise the Lord I want to give you an opportunity to partner with this ministry we are able to do these things that we do because of the support of faithful partners I preach the gospel on television I preach the gospel on radio we do so many other outreaches. We do healing meetings every month. Uh, I have many, many online platforms, very many media platforms that we minister to. And the secret is committed partners. The gospel is free, but it is expensive to bring out. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner with this ministry? You can give as the Lord leads you. You can give us an amount every month. You can use those phone numbers that are written on the screen you can support us you know when you support the gospel you become a partaker of the grace that runs on the ministry you become a partaker of the blessings and the favor that run on the ministry as as a matter of fact there is a blessing that is reserved for those who support the gospel philippians chapter 4 verse 19 paul was writing to the philippian church that had been partnering with him in preaching the gospel and he says and my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I learned that when you partner with the gospel, you open the door for divine supply into your life. As you partner with us, I believe that the Lord shall bless the work of your hands. The Lord shall make his grace abound to you so that at all times, having all that you need, you shall abound in every good work. Please consider supporting this program consider supporting Christ like nations international financially and as you do that the blessing of God shall flow into your life thank you so much for supporting our ministry God bless you